In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly. The time has come again. The champion must die. Everybody and welcome to another edition of Defend Your Movie. I, I am your host Sean Donnelly here with my co-host Farrah Brook, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back. She's back. We did not have Farrah last week. We'll I could talk finally about that. listen to last week's episode because I wasn't on it. Is that why you don't listen to the podcast at all? hundred percent. I guess course. that makes sense because whenever I tape. Stand-up comedy sets of my own. I don't watch them. I absolutely hate the sound set. of my own voice, and it's it's held me back in stand-up in ways because I know if you watch yourself, if you listen a lot, that can really, really help you. But I just I know. cannot do it. Well, do me a favor. Can you, in honor of you being back, can you introduce our guest this week? O M G, <laughs> are you in for a treat? Defend your movie heads. <laughs> we haven't settled on a word yet, but. Oh yeah, defenders of the move. Defenders. I think defend- the oh, defenders. The defenders. The defenders. Well, that works. You just got a little sneak preview. We have a very close friend of mine, incredible comedian. She runs a great monthly show at the Jane Hotel. She is the co-host of the very popular podcast, Lady Lovin. Mm. Please give a warm welcome to Greta Titelman. Yay! Hello. Thank you so much for doing this, Greg. Oh my god, I'm so like beyond excited to be here because I love if there's I love movies. Yeah, and I, I never love being knew that about you. Well, really? Yeah, I never knew that about you. Do you know what I do every Sunday? No, I watch three movies. What you watch three, every back to back single Sunday? Pretty much as like a routine. Like you yeah. have that where you do it. Because I, here's the thing: I like am the kind of person where I get into overdrive. And, like, I will just do, I'll, like, do too much. Yeah. And I needed to force myself to just chill the fuck out. So the way that I did that was I was like, okay, what am I, what calms me down? What do I like to do? And I used to feel very guilty that, like, movies and watching TV was, like, my hobby. But now I don't give a fuck. And I watch three movies a Sunday. What did you watch this past Sunday? Yeah, in a row. Well, this past Every Sunday was interesting because Sunday? I was on a plane. Oh, you have the time. Yeah, so you, you can watch movies. I on watched a plane. movies on a plane. So yeah. what did I? Oh, you know what I did? I never watch real rom coms. I never do it. But then uh. I was like, "Fuck it!" And I've been traveling so much that I've basically watched. Every movie I wanted to watch on Delta. Yeah. So <laughs> I watched something borrowed, which was that oh, weird time. I would when, watch like, that. Okay, you know what? This I haven't a, seen it, but I would. It was the time for rom coms between like 2001 and 2012, let's say, where like Jennifer Goodwin and Kate Hudson found themselves in every single rom com. Yeah. I mean, Kate Hudson the has glory done, days in my eyes. She did. <laughs> she did. You know, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days, Something Borrowed. She did the one with uh, fucking Anne Hathaway. That's who the Kate Hudson was in How to Lose a Guy. Yeah, I'm saying, oh, and then Jennifer Hudson, oh, Goodwin was in Something Borrowed, and then she was in the He's Just Not That Into You, like all of these mm-hmm. movies. That was so a great I watched film. those two movies, and then I watched uh, Never Been Kissed. Oh, oh that's a I good one. That. That's a great one. I love that. And, and you movie. saw it before, Never Been Kissed. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Never Been Kissed is one of those movies that you're like, this is going to be dumb, and then it's like, it's really, really good. Oh, it's a fantastic movie, and the cast is incredible. And that guy, Michael something, who plays the teacher, his name is Michael something. Yeah, he's hot, and he always. Oh, Super hot. No, you guys, I watched, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, I also watched, wait, I didn't tell you the three movies. I watched Something Borrowed, I watched. Uh, Never been kissed. And I watched Sweet Home Alabama. Oh my God. Matthew you're going for some classics. Yeah. No, he's not in Sweet Home Alabama. No, it's what? Josh Lucas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is me like, knowing movies. Oh, I know something about that movie. No, Josh that's Lucas not is like the poor all. man's Matthew McConaughey. He is a poor man's Matthew McConaughey. He's yeah, a sleeper. I, he's I a sleeper, like though. Seen... He is a sleeper. Also, I'll tell you this much. 
what happened? All I know is now he's like the voice of Home Depot. You don't see him. You know, stuff. Like, go, like get that money. Like good. Oh, for sure. Him. Yeah, like, go for it. Great. But he was in Sweet I Home Alabama. I have no idea now who you guys are talking about. Uh, I could have sworn Matthew just, McConaughey I'll was in you. that movie. I've seen the poster. Isn't he, it Reese Witherspoon? He looks Reese just like and Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. He looks just oh, like and um and uh, Patrick Dempsey. Yes, he's in it too. Isn't it? Camp, and he's a he is a famous he's famous for his rom coms. Yes. Which one of the original the one of the golden ones is Can't Buy Me Love from back Can't in the Buy day. Can't Buy Me Love is a great That was a huge movie when I was a kid. So Film. Greta, have you seen like every movie? Like I just never really a, knew this about you. You know, it's a it's um, that's we're a, kind of best friends. Yeah, though. I mean it's a sleep it's a sleeper situation with me over here. <laughs> I I've seen a lot of movies. I love movies. I mean for me, like growing up, the biggest treat was like going to a movie, and I just love movies. I don't like, know. Would you, let me ask you this: We were yeah. talking about this on the last podcast when Farrah wasn't here, but like the whole the culture surrounding going to see movies. Would you go see a movie by yourself? I've d- I have. Yeah, I've oh, done it a I bunch love of times. to do that. I did- Farrah, you don't even watch movies. Stop <laughs> just because Greta watches Excuse movies. Excuse me. Stop Maybe I don't to- watch a lot of movies, but when I do, I make sure to be alone in a public space. Uh, a public place. place? <laughs> a public place while doing it. I love to go to the movies alone. You do. I do. Because I find when you're at the movies with another person, it can get a little stressful because you're thinking about well, how are they experiencing the movie when I'm at the movies alone, it's a like a lovely I love experience. It. I love you know what I alone. don't love? I do not love going on a date to the movies. I've never Same. understood that. Same. I don't like it. Same. It's terrorism. Why? Because you're not talking. Well, I need to be. We need to be dating. Like we need to be in a relationship for me to want to go to a movie with you. Agree. Because completely. I think it's like. To, it's the same thing as going to a concert when people are like, I, I got tickets for our first date. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, let's go do something. No, because no. you're fun. sitting yeah. or standing next to the person in silence. Yeah, you don't also, know anything about them. You just happen to be watching this show with them. I went on a date once. I don't know if it was the first date, but we definitely weren't in a relationship. And I wanted to walk out of the movie, but I didn't because we were on a date. It was 8mm, and that movie is so bad. 8mm is a terrible, terrible. Terrible. The movie. beginning is actually not that bad. You're like, oh, this could be good. And then you realize, oh, it's just the wheels fall off of this I've movie. Never what heard does of it. happen? Like it's a, all about a who? snuff film. It's right. ridiculous, and it's Nicolas Cage playing. A, yes, he's a detective. He's hired by this rich guy yes. to find out who the girl was in this video. Oh no, no, it was rich guy's wife that died, and the rich guy had, like he was so rich he had this snuff, snuff film commissioned, and the the wife is beside herself, and she wants to find out who the girl is and if she actually died or if it was all for show. Yes. and he and it leads him on this like a dark trail of like like underground porn scene in like LA and then New York and Joaquin so Phoenix. So funny. Jo- Joaquin Phoenix is in it and he plays like a porn store employee that helps him out and then uh, what's his name? The guy from Fargo who the, doesn't say a word in Fargo. Like His name escapes me right now. He plays one of the porn producers and he and there's a great line at th- towards the end everything just goes to shit right mm-hmm. and they're all in one place and there's this like S&M guy who wears a mask and his name's Machine and he does whatever the porn producer says and the porn producer gets killed and right as he's dying he goes kill them Machine kill them all <laughs> 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 Meaning kill like Nicolas Cage and Joaquin Phoenix. That's and, and Machine just goes ape shit and tries to kill him. It's, that's amazing. It's like comically bad. But uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I I want. I was on a date and I want. Also, it's a. That's I didn't know that's what it was about, and I felt weird. Yeah, like, going on yeah, a like, date yeah, yeah, yeah. with about a snuff film. You know, like whatever. But that, that's the thing. Like, don't they don't make movies like that anymore? Where they won't put movies like that anymore. So where, where they're where they're in the theater. Because of how we have iTunes and all that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, well, we have iTunes, we have all the streaming and everything. Also, movie culture is just really different now. It's like, I'm sorry, but different. when I go to the movies and I, especially if I'm at, like, Union Square and I'm spending fucking $17. Yeah. This is not fun. Like, yep. I, I don't have the yep. feeling of, like... I saw a movie at Union Square. Was it with you? Maybe, Probably. What? What was and it? And it was so bad. Was it with I me? I don't think it was with you. What movie was it? I don't want to say. The oh, last movie I saw was Moana. Why can't Moana. you say that? Oh, okay. Then no. I want to know what movie it was. I don't want to say because, you know, oh, it's, right. it's There's it's people we business. know in this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 But so what were you saying about the culture was, of movies? You were saying you're so at. Like, you're, I'm just like, it's you different. Can't it's go different unless you it's can't like a go. Great ex- yeah. It's thing. like, I love, like, when I was a teen, like, and I, I wasn't a teenager that fucking long ago, but yeah. when I would, I would go and literally, like, 
buy a ticket to a movie. It didn't matter what movie, and we would just go and like but make you would. out. That's like and, like, ten years it. ago, yeah. Yeah. so much has changed in ten years. I mean, this was like in really like fifteen years ago in terms of when I would go and like make out with when I was like twelve and thirteen in like a movie theater. Oh, but, it was the best! It was an outing. You were at the mall, and you're like, we go to the movies. Yeah. Like, oh, you all meet up at the movies. Yeah. Oh, it was great. It was great. It was the best. And movies were like that was something that was affordable for like us to do as children something that wasn't crazy something that someone could be like here's eight bucks have fun at the movies yeah. you can also get a popcorn you kind of felt like an adult yeah like you kind of you're like because you were left alone like the, your movie like when you're a kid going to the movies is the one thing that your parents were like all right i'm just dropping you yeah. off here no worries everything else good. you did that like was that far from your house you kind of like you had supervision you had supervision I had supervision. The oh, you, know, whole you were time. in like a lock under lock and key. Yeah, I grew up down the street from a movie theater. So that's I just oh, did you? Oh, Wait, where'd you grow? Nice. Up? Washington D.C. <gasps> you grew up down the street from a movie theater. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I grew up not far from one, but it was like far enough that I wouldn't have walked there. Franklin Square Quads. That was the name of it. There and was this guy with a mullet ran it named John. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we need to talk about my movie. Yes, we have to. Yeah, what movie? We can't movie. delay. Any longer? Oh, this oh is we, no, we are. We don't want to talk about it. We, are, we got. I just want to talk about time. movies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we got time. We, we have plenty time. of time. But we will because <laughs> this is what I mean. Like, I want to get a song. It actually kind of segues into what you were saying. Like, if you go to a movie these days, you better make sure it's a good, a movie. good movie, or it's a movie that you're, it's intended to be good. Like, right. My thing now, like I said, they don't make eight millimeters and stuff like that, or like any kind of those '90s or 2000s Richard Gear type things. Yeah, we talked about this before. They don't make those anymore. Like, they don't make them because people don't go see them. They can just watch them on demand. Yeah, they can watch them on Netflix. So Netflix is going to take over that part of movie, like thrillers that aren't straight up horror movies. Oh, also, mm. Neff, I mean, oh, have you? did you guys watch um, Gerald's Game? No. Holy fuck. You guys Is need it on to Netflix? Watch it. it just came out on Netflix um, starring Carla, uh, oh, what's her name? Who's like low-key very... Oh, from uh, Watchmen? Yes. I know, yes, I know you're talking about. Um, she's an Italian last name. Like... What's her name? Yeah, she's very hot. <laughs> very hot. Alex wasn't giving us the answer to that. He was just telling us how hot she was. She's well, super hot. She is super hot. She, um, she's Guadere? Gu- 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 uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Gu- yeah gu- what is it? Gugino. Gugino, yeah. Gugino yeah. yes. She, yeah, she's super Italian. She's super She sounds hot. like a character from The Sopranos. You That's need how to Italian watch. she is. So it's uh, a Stephen King novel. Oh. And it's the movie. And it's called Gerald's Game? It's called Gerald's Game. Now, is it horror or is it like, is it like a psychological thriller? It's psychological thriller. Cool plot, though. It's amazing. She should, like, it's all of the reviews about this film are like, she needs to win an Oscar. What the fuck is going on? But I guess Netflix just released it like yesterday I think and mm-hmm. they were a week late for the Oscar window uh, oh no her performance is she's a good actress do you want me to tell you the premise of it without giving too much away yeah can you do that yeah yeah go for it um basically uh, husband, and then we'll get into your movie yeah husband and wife escape for a weekend and they're having some marital issues and they want to revive their sex life and she gets he decides to handcuff her both hands to a bed right and and shit and she's like, hey, what are you doing? What? Wait, and did what? What'd you say? And things get fu- things get crazy. <gasps> After that point. Yeah. Oh, I love this. And she's super Italian in it. She's like, hey, get these guys. <laughs> she's like, get hey, these, what are you doing? Get these off, off for me. me. <laughs> I'm Carla Guadagnino. No. Doing, hey, what are you still got with these handcuffs? <laughs> Sean, we're going to get blogged about. Please. Uh, why? Stop to these of- no. offensive impressions. The one group of people that you can make fun of is Italians. <laughs> Fuck I Italians. Know, I'm, I'm half Italian. Right? And I have Italian friends. I'm Italian. You're not Italian. Yeah. What, are you half Italian, Italian, half Jewish? Um, I don't you, know if that's it's half kind of and the half, same thing. but... What? Yeah. I'm Italian. You are? Yeah. And half My Jewish? My aunt actually told me, yes. Is Titleman Jewish, yes, right? Yes, half, yeah. half and half. Titleman sounds... Th- you are half Titleman. Jewish? I am learning so Titleman much about Titleman is super Grattan. Jewish now, right? I didn't think you were full half. I mean, I'm technically not full half. Right, like your mom or dad wasn't. My, my mom was Catholic, and then my dad wasn't raised... Jewish, but, but he's like Jewish. he's yeah. Jewish, like secular Jewish. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Mm. Uh, the one Shocking. thing about that girl Carla, Shocking. that woman Carla is a really great actress. But the only thing that uh, that I got annoyed at that she did when she was in The Watchmen, because it's supposed to be two different parts of her life. In the you ever see The Watchmen? No. 
It's like a superhero movie. It's like a weird, like um, you know, graphic novel that people they were so excited they were gonna make a movie about it, and they, people think they screwed it up. It was what's his name, uh, the guy who Zach uh, Snyder, and the guy who does all the DC stuff and screws it up. And she was in it, and they did like they had the worst makeup job, and they made her look like she was like seventy or like sixty. Oh God! And she just tried to act like an old person, and I'm like, Ugh, this is not. I don't like. No, this. no, yeah. I don't like that. That's like how I feel about Mandy Moore on This Is Us. They have hard. Oh, they have hard makeup. Older makeup. She plays young Mandy, and then she also plays like sixty-five year old yes. Mandy, and it annoys me so much because all that I'm thinking watching sixty-five year old Mandy, I'm like. Some fabulous 65-year-old actress yeah. could have just played this part. Yeah. And it would be so much more believable and so much more fun to watch yeah, than like bizarre. her and weird it's like turtle bizarre. makeup. You know what the best version of that that's ever been done ever in film was? And that's huh. TV, but film. Uh, a League of Their Own. Yeah. Ever, Who did they put in old makeup? They didn't put anybody in old makeup. They, the lady at the end of A League of Their Own that's supposed to be Gina Davis, yeah. it looks exactly like her. But it's not. It's, it's not Gina Davis. They might have overdubbed her voice. They might have done that. I don't even Which know. Which is fine. I don't care. Whatever. But w- go. I was convinced it was Gina Davis and it was the best and makeup it's not. job. Somebody t- it's not. Actually, can you look that up, Alex? Look at the woman who plays, if Gina Davis plays Gina Davis at the end of A League of Their Own. Yeah, that's very important. It's very, I, I'm dying to know, because maybe somebody was messing with me when they were when they told me that, that it wasn't her. Well, if it is her, that's an incredible makeup job. It is incredible. Like, yeah. It looks exactly like her. And it looks like my grandmother, so like it has a special place in my heart. Aww. It's very sad. Uh, all right, so let's talk about your movie, because this one, I think this is, like I say this all the time, but I think this one really will be super controversial. This is going to be <laughs> what happens sometimes when we put the when we when I put the Instagram up about like what movie we're doing and stuff. People are like how how like when they go oh I'll be like Greta defends this movie how and the movie you're defending this week. And I'm gonna first read the very stats. brave. We've got. Drum roll, please. A 2.2 2 out of 10 on IMDb. <laughs> we have a record, I think, for this podcast at 7% Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> but Even monkey we have a turnaround from Google users at 69%. Wow. Like the movie. Who are these yes. Google yes, users? me. What if they're all me? <laughs> It's just Greta. Me. Yeah, I'm just like 400,000 times. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is the movie, Greta? I'm here to defend the gorgeous <laughs> film <laughs> Glitter. Ooh, what's the biggest song from that? I'm looking at the now, song list because I wanted to pull up a little music. Uh, now well, there is a song called Glitter. But he, that's not the main. They play. There's that. one. The single she has in it. That's not the. That's no, not there's a single. There's like. Is it called Lover Boy? Lover Boy is he, the song that she performs. <laughs> okay. Here's the deal. If you don't know what she's talking about, it's the movie that Mariah Carey made back in the 2000s. 2001. It's a drama slash romance. One hour and forty four minutes of pure joy. Mariah yes. Carey. Yes. In her film debut. Yeah. And this movie, to the point where I'll explain to you, this is how bad this movie is. I'll explain to you, me, I wanted to watch it today. I, you know, it's you know, hard. You know, iTunes, <laughs> iTunes, like to, to rent, usually I'll, I'll just go to iTunes on my Apple TV and I'll rent whatever we're going to watch if I haven't seen it. And I've seen clips of this movie already and I think I've seen a, a bunch of it. But Yes. I go to iTunes. iTunes doesn't have it. iTunes didn't have what it. What do you mean iTunes doesn't have glitter? Doesn't have glitter. Look it up. Uh, also, Netflix doesn't have it. The only people that have it are Amazon Prime or Amazon. You can rent Wait, it from Amazon. Wait, that is fascinating to me. HBO has it. Oh, I or have they the did. HBO. Oh, did they have it? They did. I All mean, right. I there was a point in my life in. when I was watching Glitter with my mom on HBO like once a week. It was that in the color purple. Ooh. Watch Honestly, two movies all the time. where I stand, Greta, usually on this podcast, I'm here as never have seen it. Um, but have you, I have haven't you seen, seen most movies? Yes, I have yes. seen Glitter, but I don't remember it, which is something that's come up a few times well, on this podcast. We've we've brought attention to a little memory issue of my own, I think. Yeah, sometimes. But also, sure, there might be reasons for that. But I will say, remembering movies is yes. like its whole own thing. It is. Because it's think. like you're replaying it in your head. Like, I know I saw Glitter, and I can damn well say I did like it. Well, that's but the thing. But I we're, cannot we remember anything about it. We were walking over here from the train, you were like, about oh, it. I got 7% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I got this. And I was like laughing, and you're like, I remember it being an amazing movie. I'm like, you just 
told me it got right. 70% well, that's of okay, the online but here's the thing. It is an I amazing remember movie. loving it. It is an amazing movie. Do you want me to just try to tell the premise? Yeah, can yes, you please. catch okay. me up so I can remember? Like, okay. like Farrah has, because you might as well have not seen it. So. I, I honestly can't remember one thing. So okay. like she hasn't seen it, tell Farrah as succinctly as you can the plot of Glitter, please. Okay. <sighs> okay. See, that's the sound you should make starting this plot. <laughs> just, ugh. <laughs> Mariah Carey plays the role of Billy Frank. Billy is the daughter of this woman who was a singer at like a jazzy cabaret bar. Love it. Um, the movie opens, I'm not really, I'm just like kind of telling you, this isn't really like the premise, I'm just telling you what happens, basically. The movie I opens, remember this the opening. The movie opens I and Billy's a little girl. Yes. And, Classic. And her mom wanted to try like a new song and the song failed and they go home and the mom's like drunk and pissed off and smokes a cigarette, falls asleep with a lit cigarette and then Billy wakes up and the house is burnt down. Mom's dead. Billy gets put into foster care. Okay. So Holy this is like, yeah. Shit. So then I remember mom didn't the, die. The mom, Oh, the mom comes die. back. The mom comes. No, the mom happens is the mom, they mom has to give it to her foster oh, care. Oh, right. Because, because she if she had addiction. Down the yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. I can't believe here I am defending my movie. And you're telling me <laughs> what the fuck is happening. So, well, in all fairness, I just saw yeah, it. Thing, yeah. Um, I should have watched it today, honestly. I, it's okay. I should have. Anyway, so, yeah, she has to get put I in foster that. care. And then, like, so that was in the 70s. And then now the movie takes place in, like, the 80s, like, the late 80s. Which, and, let's make a point. I have an issue with that, too. All right, go ahead. Okay, it takes place in the late 80s. Make a point of that. She is with these two other girls and they also they met in foster care and the three of them are kind of like this like singing act billy obviously having the best voice and the girls are like this latin actress who i don't know her name debrat yeah debrat and mariah carey yes, yes. <laughs> so um what ends up happening is they they go to a, they go out one night they go to a club and then and then this terrence howard is in it yeah, Terrence Howard's like this, like kind of like record producer, sleazeball kind of. Yeah, guy. like, like here's Mariah Carey singing, and like here's the three of them singing, and is like, look, I sign background backup to, like singers for artists, like want to want to come on the road with of uh, us in Silk, Silk being this like big pop star who's this like gorgeous name. I mean, you know who she looking. is, right? Who Padme Lakshmi, Lock- whatever. Oh. She's the host of Top Chef. Yeah, that that's she's amazing. one of the hosts of Top Ooh, Chef. Yeah. I like her. I, I love her. Is. She's gorge. So she is gorge. So you know, all the girls are really excited. They bring Mariah Carey into the studio so she can like sing what like the song, which she thinks is going to be backup tracks. They get to the show. Turns out they're just using Mariah's voice and Silk is lip singing yes, the song. I recall that. Which yeah. I also think is an amazing concept because it's like if Silk has been famous for so long, she suddenly has Mariah Carey's yeah. voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, is Silk supposed to be famous or is he trying to make her famous in the... I, was, I think I was she's like locally the, famous. Yeah, but then she's, but then she's trying to... Get her to like pop off because they have they record this song and then Terrence Howard walks over to the the board op guy and he goes hey while they're recording he goes hey turn down Silk's vocals and put up Billy's put up Billy's yeah and then and then it just literally it, I don't know why that's even a thing because it's not like he made her lower he just made it like like, like Mariah Carey was singing the song yeah and then they go to that's sing awesome. the song live at this club yes. And she's just lip syncing to the track with Mariah Carey's voice, and then Mariah Carey is there with the brat and the Latin lady, yeah. and they're just singing background to Mariah Carey's voice. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's I like love this. Sh- <laughs> yeah. It was it was very fucked up. Anyway, uh, long story short, Mariah Carey ends up meeting this guy Dice. Dice is basically like this like hustler kind of manager guy who's like, yo, like you're so talented and beautiful, like I, yeah. I, like we'll figure this out. Like, we'll get it done. Whatever. They fall in love. And they have, like, this romance. And Mariah Carey starts writing songs. Yeah. And, his and name one of my Dice. favorites. Dice. His, well, his nickname is yeah, Dice. And then he goes by something else as well. Lucky Seven or something. Yeah. And then the other thing that's... All right. Two things. Two parts that I have an issue with. One is when she first meets him, he recognizes that it's her voice. He's like, wait a minute. That's not Silk's yeah. voice. And he runs after Mariah, Billy, and goes, hey... When she's backstage. And she's I doing wanna, that thing where she's like, la. Yeah, she's like showing him, like, yeah. it's me, motherfucker. Like, that kind of, oh. like, you know, basically. So, th- throwing shade, if you will. Uh, you know, throwing yeah. shade. 
And then it leaves. Uh, they leave the brat, the Latin lady, and and Mariah. And they're running. And then he runs after me. He goes, "Hey, I want to, I want to work with you. I want to produce you. You're amazing. We can we can do great things together." Mm-hmm. And the we- and it's outside. But the weird part about the scene is Mariah is like so excited. And Mariah does this thing in this movie that is such bullshit. I don't think she can act, which that's fine. She's a singer. She can act, but she starts doing this thing like whisper acting, where she just whispers every line that she has. And you know Especially what? When Maybe she's that's to be a humble. part of her delivery. Uh-oh. Maybe that's a part of how she's, she's like doing the role. He's like, you're such a great actress. He's like, she's like, thanks so much appreciate it well, maybe no, she, you know, it's a metaphor she's coy like she's being approached and she's being coy but like, she does it like throughout the whole entire yeah, movie yeah she does I mean there's a one scene but when Dice gives Mariah her a rose talks. on a date and she smells the rose yeah. like 9,000 times but here's the weird scene when he goes to approach her the first time right and he goes I want to sign you and she's and he's like She's like, all right, great. That's great. Thank you. And she's so excited. You can see it over her face. She's yeah. so excited because he's going to work with her and they're going to get something done. And, her, and he goes, my name is Lucky Seven. I go by Dice as well, whatever. I don't know what the fuck. And then she goes, all right. And he goes, all right, I'll talk to you. And she's like, all right, we'll talk. And he's like, she's like, he's like, how do I get in touch with you? She's like, you're Lucky Seven, right? You figure it out. I'm like, wait, but he wants to work with you. Wait, like, what do you mean? So he's, is he, are you, is this a romantic thing? Are you trying to work with him? Like, hey, don't you want him to work well, with she you? she still has the power, She has bitch. the power, yeah. She's being, you know, also she doesn't know if it's bullshit. So what, she's going to give her number to this no, guy? No, she like, was trying to be coy. Yeah, she wants to be coy and then she's yeah. going to see what happens and she's she did. She's a fucking diva. And then also another weird thing with, with regarding their relationship, fast forward to when they go on their, their technically their first date. When they're, when she's in the limo. When she's in the limo. Yeah. They Go to the, like he picks her up in the limo. He's like, they already have a big record deal by that point with like CM something. All of they this have, is not coming back to me. The beginning, no, no, yeah. stuck. Yes. So he goes, we got it. Courtesy of the record company, let's go out. Blah blah blah. And then she's like, this feels like a date. And then later on that night, he's like, I gotta go pick something up. Do you want to come up to my apartment? Right? And yeah. she's like, no, because you're gonna try to hook up with me. And he's like, nah. He's like, don't be so paranoid. And they get up there, but the weird part is he was going up there to pick something up or something. But they're literally. He's literally. He, Wait, also, can we talk about his apartment? Yeah, but one second. There's, there's a weird. Yeah, right after. There's a weird part, that, and they do this in a lot of '90s movies, where when a guy brings a girl to his apartment, he immediately goes into "I'm giving you a tour" mode of the, yeah. of the apartment, and he goes so up. So weird. And he was supposed to be picking something up, but he goes up and just starts pointing out stuff in his apartment. It's so bizarre. It's he also so lives weird. in like. Again, very '90s thing that would happen in movies where, like, the guy lives in like a loft with a steel sliding door. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That is an '80s thing. But the '80s part that this movie takes place in the '80s yeah. is bullshit. Yeah, this does not look like the '80s even close. I guarantee you, there's all sorts of. There's like technical errors in this movie. There's one scene where when the brat's in the back doing like background vocals, she's not in sync with the background vocals. That's amazing. Here's <laughs> here's the thing. And what ultimately ends up happening though is is Billy and Dice get into a fight. They break up. They start writing love songs for each other. Ooh. Mariah Carey goes to his place to see him and reconcile and he wasn't there but she discovers this song lover boy mm. or some that song i think discovers that he wrote these songs for her oh. so she picks up the lyrics kisses kisses the lyrics <laughs> It sets it down good. so he knows she wants to get back together Ooh. okay she is playing msg Oh, she is blowing the fuck up. (laughs) And then he comes back, sees that she was there and he's like, I'm going to go get my girl. So he gets his ass up to Madison Square Garden and Terrence Howard is waiting for him outside and was like, oh, and also that's the side plot. We should mention this. Terrence Howard kind of had them under contract, the background yeah. girls. And yeah. Mariah being one of them. And then this guy, Lucky Seven, Dice, who is like, oof, they have scenes with him like with a jacket on and no shirt underneath and like a chain. And he's just I real need corny. to look up what he looks Super like. Super corny. I think I need a He does not fit this. the part at all. No, but also, yeah, it was like, also, there was, they'd sign with another label and then... Well, right. But what happens is... So or no, then, Lover Boy was her first major single in this movie, and then she writes glitter for. And then he writes glitter she, for. They begin writing. To, but Billy discovers that the music he has written and realizes they wrote this. Oh, that's what it is, which is why this movie is so fucking good. They wrote the same 
song. Oh, God, that's what? terrible. Yes. Oh, Excuse I have the, me? Full they wrote the same song called oh. Never Too Far. They oh. both happen to write yes. the same song? Yes. And Dice, oh. upon seeing her lipstick prints on his music sheet, plans a reconciliation. Never Too Far. Is that mm-hmm. there somewhere out there? Like Fievel? With Fievel when he <laughs> looks at the moon? I mean... It's pretty much pretty much. <laughs> they wrote the same song. Yes. So then, I'm okay, perplexed. whatever. Long story short, Dice ends up getting shot by Terrence Howard, and Mariah Carey is delivered. Shot? Yes. Well, here's the shot thing. Dead. They have, oh my god! You got to pay attention here. They they, they literally. Well, oh, that's so gorgeous. Hold on. Okay. Play that at the end because that's going to be very important. Kay. Well, here's the thing. So Dice, I, it's so you cannot think of Andrew Dice Clay when you hear Dice in this I know. Movie. And it has nothing to do with Andrew Dice Clay. No, I know. Owes Terrence Howard 100 grand. Which is a hilarious amount of money because if she's selling out MSG, it's like you, I mean. Yeah. I'm shitting on the movie, but I'm not. Also, if this just... is the 80s, 100 grand is like a million dollars. Like it's insane. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's like the, the conversion rate, like, it's like an insane amount of money. So he says to him, hey, a uh, hundred grand. And then he, they kind of like, he's like, you know, that was a bullshit deal. He's like, it's like that now, huh? And then they kind of, he's like, all right, I'll be seeing you. And then I guess he sees him at the end, shoots yeah. him. Shoots him and he dies. And then Mariah Carey receives the news of his death right before she's about to get on stage. <laughs> but she literally sweeps away the tears, looks at herself and knows what she has to do. <laughs> And she gets wow. on, she's wearing this glittering, gorgeous gown, and she gets up on stage, and they start to play the track for Lover Boy, her hit single, and everyone's like, wow! And then she tells the band to stop, and then she says this, Put it up. and then she says the this. I, lo- I lost it a little. Okay, here we are. Let's start from the beginning and put it up the... Because you never know when you might lose them. No, you need to start from the beginning. Um, beginning. I didn't know if it <laughs> Everybody out there, don't ever take anybody <laughs> for granted. I'm lo- mouthing this, by the way. Yes, Greta knows everywhere. Because you never know when you might lose them. <laughs> and you may never get a chance to tell them how you really feel. And now she starts singing Never Too Late. Now, let's be honest. She thought this was going to be a huge hit after this movie, this song. Well, you know that she... And it wasn't. It it did not sell. This movie, I think, hurt her career. Nothing yeah, can hurt Mariah. No, career. nothing can hurt Mariah. But yeah, nothing will get Mariah. I down. was surprised that there isn't any well-known song from this. Okay, movie. well, that's you know, what I'm saying. It was, was supposed of, to be. There was a lot of issues with the making of Glitter. So Mariah initially wanted to do this project in 1997 called All That Glitters. That was her initial thing. But then she was having some issues. No one was really getting on board. No one was like doing what she wanted to do. So then that project got put on hold. And then finally Glitter got okayed. And that was in like 2000. By the way, they shot this movie in Canada. They shot it here too. I, I, I walked past them shooting it once. That's a, incredible. <laughs> but here's, the, here's why I love this film. Nobody seemed happy You're to so be so old. <laughs> here's why I love this film. It's 2001. <laughs> were you a fetus in 2001? No, I mean, I three years I was, ago. I was waiting for glitter to come out. That's what I was doing anxiously. I love this movie though because I love Mariah Carey, number one. I think she is so, you know, her, she's one of these people. Even her, with all the stories about her being a monster and being, I don't give a fuck. Be a monster, <laughs> like do what you want to do. She is a diva icon. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. Do to you Do you model your career after Mariah's? Oh, I mean, I would if I could make glitter, I, I would honestly quit. I would be like, I did what I needed to do. I came to do what I needed to do, and that's it. Glitter is a piece of art. It's a, it's it's 
her artistry, you know what I mean? And I think it's important that as artists, like all of us are, you get the opportunity to really make something that you want to make. Mariah wanted to make glitter and she did. And she But did she write it? I mean, she just had an no. idea. She's like, I want to do a movie did called Glitter. Farrah, did you think she wrote it? it? No. Did she write it? No. But did she <laughs> act her ass off? Yes. Wow, and for she's everyone terrible. that's if for Greta, everyone that wow, says you're losing me with this uh defense. Well, here. here's why. Because for everyone that says Glitter was such a bad movie. Uh, what did you expect? Like, I just like, I just don't. That's like someone being like, uh, I went to McDonald's and the food uh, I was don't bad. Know, the food wasn't that great. It's like actually McDonald's, but but like glitter, you're saying for McDonald's what it is. delicious. They're both delicious for what they are. Okay, I They're see what you're saying. They're both perfectly delicious for what they are. Like. You know, I can't believe he shoots him dead. I mean, and you need they're to trying to get us kind of like, harsh for a Mariah yeah, Carey but movie. She was like, but they do it in Selena. There's something <laughs> so that probably was part of it. Yes, I yeah, feel probably like I that was too. a huge musical movie. That's oh, one of the best what? movies you ever. You just to me. nailed it, Farah. They wanted to make her Selena. Selena. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> I think there were a bunch of other things happening yeah, too. I, I mean, mean, Selena is a true this story. This is why this, you can, this, but this they wanted want to expect more from this movie because this was supposed to be uh, like a breakout thing. I don't think it was supposed thing. to be a breakout thing. I think that it was just this story of a girl with a voice who had a hard career. Also, her mom tries to come back in the picture. Remember that? Mm, yeah, and also, That's and you weird. like we I talked about before the podcast, no, and you were like, <laughs> Mariah Carey put this forth as like. It almost is like implied. This is my story, and but it's not. It's not. She's from Long Island. Yeah. No, so she's she's from Massachusetts. She's, oh, she's from Merrick. She's from Merrick. But she hold is. on. Yeah. Oh Let's not forget sure. that Mariah did go on to be in Precious, and she was amazing in Precious. Yep. But uh, here's the thing. I think she had that. to get some shit taken away from her to get good. Like in this, she's just like I don't know. Hi, you yeah. know, every Whatever. music star in my eyes is entitled to. A bomb movie. This is why, but why I also love glitter is because glitter to me symbolizes like why I love Hollywood and movies. It's like, yeah, I'll toss you 22 million to make this absurd thing (laughs) that's like so crazy and like the storyline is all over the place and the acting is very subpar. But that's fine. But that's fun. It's fun. That's fine, but it's also, here's the thing though the intention, you're saying that because you enjoy stuff like that. And even though you're defending or quasi defending it right now, I'm defending but, it. But here's the thing: they that wasn't their intention. Like we talk a lot about. But does the that matter? The, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, matters uh, to but me. But all I know is I remember watching this as a youth and genuinely enjoying it and loving it. Well, because it was everything that so I, I wanted it to yeah, be. It's romance. It's, it's scandal. It's perfect for what it is. Is what I'm thinking. It's romance, it's scandal, it's sexy, there's singing, there's dancing, there's Mariah, there's violence, Glitter. there's like Debrat, s- isn't it? sexual I gotta now. look up Debrat, because I can't put a face to Who's that Who's now, in, right now a host of Dish Nation. She's one wow. of the other shows. that? It's like a Debrat. gossip news show, it's like a radio show. I don't even know if it's actually oh, on Debrat. the radio. I, I also, her. Yeah. I think that this movie should times. more, even I should defend it even harder, because... It is such a, it's such a thing, like, Glitter is a movie that could have only happened when it happened. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? Uh, like, that time period? Yes. Like, that is something that, that what, movie. When they come out, 2001? Yes. That movie could have only come out then. It could have only been, it was just like, so timely. I don't know. Are you saying because 9-11 was that? 9-11 was that. <laughs> like, this was the second disaster this that year. Is- <laughs> 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 it's not a funny joke. It was 2001 was a it hard was, year for the country. <laughs> yeah, 9 11. Here's I mean, yeah, the it's thing. Glitter. People want to shit on. <laughs> people want to shit on it all you want. <laughs> glitter like, is a the, magical the glitter, tale. The glitter responders. Glitter is a classic underdog that, story. I, just, I think I'm just losing it. Is that really bad? Is that really bad that I'm saying this? I'm just barking at Sean, being like, "It's an underdog uh, story." It's not. I loved it, and I think it was made for. I'll say kids slash teens like me and Greta at that time, and we loved it, and it was everything we needed to be. It made us love Mariah even more. Wow, you guys, I will say, I looked up Vondi Curtis Hall, who was the director of Glitter. Yeah, he's uh, it's he's Sexy Agent Anna. Carver. No, 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 that's not him. Vondi um, Curtis Hall is... 
I the medical drama Chicago Hope, and the yeah, he's an Marvel's actor too. Daredevil. He's a great actor. He was in Gridlocked, or directed Gridlocked. I think I saw that. Yeah, he, I, I know it. who he is. He played somebody's dad in a TV show. He's he's a really good actor. Yeah, I mean director, sh- not so much. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Well, that's a, it makes sense if he directed Chicago Hope or whatever it was because yeah. this comes off very TV-ish. I don't know. I just I love glitter for exactly what it is and I and I appreciate it for exactly what it is and I think that Mariah put, you know, Mariah was hospitalized during this filming process. Oh, is wow. that true? Yes. She is Wait, brave. for what? <laughs> Stop it. She Farrah. is. You she don't is. think that. She is. What was she hospitalized for? That is rough. That sucks. But what was she hospitalized for? I will tell you right now. Um, uh, too much glitter. Maybe that's why she was Shining smelling the bright. rose so much. She was smelling the rose. <laughs> that's that's one of the things that's so weird too. She's much. like, "You got me a rose," and he's like, "Yeah, what? What's the big deal?" She's like, "Is this a date?" Um, Carrie was <laughs> Carrie was suddenly hospitalized, citing extreme exhaustion. Mm. Oh my god! Wait. <laughs> Is it bad? <laughs> no, but you guys, this like September 11th. Wait, extreme exhaustion. Wait, the film just I just am reading more. Okay, the film was released. On, the film was released on September 21st. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> Ten days after the release of the accompanying soundtrack on September 11th, 2001. It might have been. It the came soundtrack out came out on, on September 11th. Yeah, that makes complete sense to me. It Before might, its release, Carrie was suddenly wild. hospitalized, setting extreme exhaustion and a physical and emotional breakdown. I'm yeah. shocked they still released it. It was two weeks after September 11th? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I must have seen them. Wow. I wonder if it's the, one of the last movies that has the Twin Towers in the background. Yeah, I mean, it probably is up there. Because they, there was another movie, I forget which one, that they wanted to... Maybe it was with this one as well. They wanted to digitally remove the towers because it came out after... It was filmed while they were up, and it came out after See, they I were down. See, I think that is such a weird concept. Like, I think it's awful. They fought. The director fought, or somebody fought. I forget what movie it was. If you know what movie it is, write in and tell me. Uh, and they wanted to get rid of them, and they said no. It might have been, not Spider-Man? One of the Spider-Mans or something? That, that, that sounds right to me. Yeah. And they said no, uh, and they fought, and they kept them in. I think they kept them in. That, sure. I think it was an action film, and I think that does sound right to me. Yeah. But whatever. Long story short... It's a guilty pleasure movie, and anybody that went to see Glitter thinking that it was going to be uh, like American Did you see Beauty it in the or something like that, yeah. Well, the American oh, Beauty, but yeah. you picked uh, that's a tough one. I want to do a whole episode of American Beauty because uh, American Beauty is one of my favorite movies. Oh, I will talk to you about it till I'm blue in the face and defend that movie seriously. I actually I like American Beauty. I'm not I love American made. Beauty. It's you know there's huge backlash on it now. Why? Yeah, I it's one of those movies that it won best know picture, what it is. and if you look it up online, people are freaking out because they're like, "It doesn't hold up. It's garbage." It's, you know. Okay, but the, but but isn't it not about why does it need to be about holding up? Like if it's the, if it won best picture that year, it won best picture that year. You know what I mean? There are, are so many fucking movies that won best picture that don't hold up. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. But I'm saying they're saying that one didn't either. They're not just pointing out that movie. There's it's other- interesting because in that movie there are a lot of like tropes, like. Social what, tropes, like midlife that, crisis. Sure, and, and like, but he's. I like. I, you know what it is? I think people want to hate Kevin Spacey. Oh, I love Kevin. Spacey. I love Kevin Spacey. Yeah, I like Kev. I love Kevin Spacey. Big. I like him in House of Cards. They get mad at him that he talks to the camera in House of Cards. I n- never I mean, got annoyed. That's not his choice. I think that um, I know, but they like, blame him. That's. True. I think that. Um. Oh God, what is her name? Who plays Thora Birch's friend? Oh, Scarlett. No. Uh. Uh, her friend in the movie? Yeah. Oh. The blonde. Um, Mira Servino. Mira Servino. No, not Mira Servino. Mira. Mira Servino. Sur- sur- I forgot M- the name. M- Mia, Mia, M- Mia, M- Mia, no. Mia something. Um, I think, hold on. This is going to annoy me. Severino? <laughs> Mina Savari. Mina, Mina Savari. Savari. Yeah, Mina. She was she was hugely popular. For yeah, me. she really yeah. fell off. Mina really fell well, off. Well, maybe she's yeah. just living a happy life with a family. Okay, you kind of already did this, but so let's let's recap your three reasons that people should watch the movie because you were kind of counting off okay, as you were going. Here's my one my number one reason to watch this movie. It's because it's a like delectable candy store 
to watch. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah. it's like you're in a toy shop and you want to see everyone do exactly what they do. It's the play of your dream. You're just watching what you want to see happen. I, that's lost on me, but maybe you're, you're speaking that's to people. That's my number out there. one. Okay. I, it's I a just candy thought it as like a TV movie type deal that. It was like, yeah, you're right. I see the candy, the bubblegum aspect to yeah. it. I'll give you that. Okay, cool. It's like a, yeah, it's like, it's like a, it's the same reason that I love movies like Jawbreaker. I love anything kitschy and okay. like chewy kitschy. and like fun. Perfect. Yeah, it's kitschy. Reason number two. Uh, reason number two <laughs> is it's, it's capturing a specific moment in movie making time that, that this movie could <laughs> never be made again. You are treating this movie like it's gone with the wind. You were like, this is the Godfather. The movie could never, no it's one's a, tossing out when a $22 I asked million Greta, dollar budget what to make movie, that movie do you want to do? She knew immediately. I literally she responded this in a movie. second. Oh, you're saying it's, it's, Apropos of a time in movies where they were they were giving way too much money yeah. to make a movie that you didn't need that much money to make. Yes. Okay. That actually, so it, that's it's interesting. It's overbudgeted. It's yeah. Yes. Twenty-two million is actually a lot. They could have made this movie for way less. Yeah, this, like this now, made for eleven million dollars. Well, not, uh, who knows not, what her salary was? Yeah, like not even. That's if, probably what it was. That is probably what it was because everybody else. I mean, Terrence Howard and Debrat were probably the two only other famous. I people think they just movie. got an Uber to the <laughs> set, and yeah. then it was before Uber, so that was fucking weird. And yeah. number three. The reason, above all reasons, is because it is Mariah Carey, and it is her vision, and this was her <laughs> dream. And it is fascinating and important to see her dream. Because what we are, what, this candy store kitsch factory that I'm watching and loving every second of, is Mariah Carey's dreams materialized. So this is how she sees her rise. Yeah, how she sees her rise. Like even though factually it's incorrect. I'm, factually it's incredibly incorrect. I don't even know, incorrect. but I know that she definitely wasn't from the no, city it's, with a it's mom. A it's, it's a script. No, it's a script. But a lot of other people, they have their actual real life stories and the yeah. movies they're in. Okay. Yeah. Three. Farrah, will you rewatch this movie? I know you saw it, but you might have seen part of it. Honestly, I'd love to rewatch this movie. You would? I would. I I'd like to you. relax, maybe have a drink, you know. Check it out. Yeah, it sounds like a fun time, and also, it it sounds very enjoyable. I don't see what I'm curious how it got that seven percent Rotten Tomato rating. So I'm because in, it's a I'm poor, into hate I'll tell you why. Too, one of but the, I'm definitely interested. You no, know, I'll tell you right now watch. before we go. I'll tell you one of the reasons it got. I mean, the reason it got it. It's a poor, like, I know what <laughs> Greta's saying. Greta is very emotional about it and very into the, the, certain aspects, but you notice she didn't mention one technical thing about this movie. <laughs> it is a poorly acted, poorly <laughs> filmed, poorly edited movie, and, and you're, if you feel like you're watching it's a bad TV movie. Strong. Is the well, Terrence Howard's good in, in most stuff that he does. Is, is the execution, like, as top notch as it could be? No, but just like I was <laughs> saying about McDonald's, like, you watch it because that's what you want to watch. It's like, yeah, when you watch, even, like, The but, Wicker Man, is a perfect example. Like yeah, it's a crazy right. movie, but I, I want to watch saying. Nick Cage. But the Wicker Man is a much like t like technically sound movie where you're putting you're actually watching like a professional movie. This movie is like there's all sorts of gaffes in this movie. But you have the, to say a lot just, of people come on this it, podcast and I don't want to watch it. I heard this description and I'm in. Enough for me because I'm we're excited. girls. Enough we're for girls. me right away to shut down watching this movie is the fact that. You know how easy it would have been for them to make it look like it was the 1980s and how much better, more mm. authentic it would have made this movie? Mm, I hear that. If you make it look like the real 80s in New York City, oh my God. And you would have gotten didn't a much, they? You would have gotten at least 10% of Rotten Why tomatoes. wasn't it made at that level? I don't, because you, they didn't give a shit. Yeah, they really didn't care. <laughs> they put all the was, money in her, her salary and, and was, they didn't care. And this was her passion project. She was like, we are, you guys... You guys put, you guys shut down all the glitters. So we are doing glitter come hell or high fucking water. And that's what happened. I guarantee Beautiful. you it's because she wanted it to look a certain way. And they were like, but that's not 80s. And she's yeah, like, she's I like, don't I don't care. care. I guarantee you she had carte blanche. But let's do this. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, my yeah. God. Thank you. I had Thank the best you. time. Please. I want to talk more oh. about movies with you. Well, movies are my favorite it. thing. That'd be great. Come back. I will. I'll, I'll I come quickly... back and we can talk about American Beauty. Yeah. You can talk oh. about The Wicker Man. That'd be great. Has anybody talked about The Wicker Man? Everyone hates that movie. 
But we can do it if you want. We'll do it as a bonus movie. episode. That'd be great. Well, uh, speaking of bonus episodes. Oh, wait. Holy let's do this before crap. we get plugs. Hold on. Our yeah. Patreon. Is it Patreon or Patreon? Patreon. Our Patreon is popping, people. It's going crazy out there. Everyone's going nuts for the new <laughs> content <laughs> and the bonus episodes. So far, we only have one. We have a great, exciting one coming out next week, though. So sign up now. Get in there if you want to get on some bonus content we only have the episodes now but we're going to be rolling out all types of bonus content and one of the incredible rewards is having your name read out loud on this very podcast so i'm going to repeat some people's names that have already been said because you know what there are true blues and we love them but real quick this round i just want to say shout out to seth parmer jamie de leon Evan, Curtis, <laughs> Russell, Shepard, my my girl Cheryl Boglarski. What's <laughs> up, Cheryl and Lee Kowarski? Ooh, thank you guys are, so much. We love you guys. We I love, love you guys. this podcast. And Greta, what would you like to plug? We'll do plugs. Oh, what do I want to plug? When when does yep. this come out? It comes out Friday. Who comes out Friday? Oh, and uh, your if you're, podcast, Lady you plug, Listen to my podcast, Lady Eleven. Uh, dealing, we talk a lot about girl stuff. Cool. And if you um, are in the city, I'm hosting my New York Comedy Festival show. I'm hosting because I'm half Jewish. My bat mitzvah, <laughs> uh, November 9th. No idea. And that's going to be a great night. So you guys, should where is it going to be? It, we were like in flux with that right now. Probably we have it at the Jane Hotel where I host my monthly show right now, but it might be subject to change. But the link is in my Instagram. So perfect. Yeah. Yes. Come Farrah? to my bat mitzvah. You want to talk well, about I didn't get to say it's patreon.com slash defend your movie. Start sorry to throw this down your throat, folks. But <laughs> we're excited. We are. Uh yes. Please come next Saturday. It is the f- October 14th to Halyards in Brooklyn to see me and Melissa Stokoski do our half hours. I'll be also, there. Also, what's the name of the show so they can search it? It's called 1600 Hours, 1800 Hours, 1800 Seconds, 1800 or yeah. seconds. 1600 Seconds. I don't know. However long <laughs> a half hour is. Then on October 18th at Littlefield, we have Harriet. Hosted by me and Blair Saki. Very nice. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great show. Let's have a popping lineup. Then also, Halloween at Caroline's. If you're looking for a fun thing to do on Halloween, come out to Caroline's. Shawnee's going to be there. (laughs) I'm going to be there. We're going to be doing some comedy, some cabaret. I'm going to be Lady Gaga as of now. Uh so yeah, come check that out. That's I will come and be an audience member, and yes. I will dress up as Mariah Carey from Glitter. Whoa, Perfect. that'd be Perfect. huge! We're having a cabaret formal wear. I'll sing. I'll parade. sing. T- I mean, I'm a singer. I'll sing too. That'd be Perfect. Perfect. And right. lastly, uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter. That's at Defend Your Movie on Twitter. Also, we have a Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Defend Your Movie. Uh, and yeah, I'm at Shawnee Time on Twitter. What are you? You're at Farrah Brook on Twitter. Yeah, right? we'll put it in the descript. But please, please tweet at us movies we should. I should really yep. watch. Yes. Let me know what you think should be our next Sean finally sees it. Our next Farrah finally sees it. And I need the listener need feedback. Oh. And thank you so much for listening, guys. Thanks to Showbiz Studios for having us, and we will see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.